Finally! Waiting in a tavern without a drink is maddening. How do other people do it? And Mog hasn't been helpful. His solution to every problem involves a great amount of alcohol. What news of the bastard who murdered my mother? Did you find him? I would have preferred to see him dragged back here for a proper trial and execution. But at least justice has been served. Were you able to determine who was behind the murder? Was it connected to the threat you came to warn my father about? Damn those Reach Witches! And damn my father for being so... so... obstinate! But what does the Coven want? Are they planning to kill my father? What else can you tell me about this threat to our kingdom? That's horrible. But there must be more to this than simply turning my people into monsters. Well, I'll do what I can to help you. Mother would have wanted me to. What you've done and discovered will be enough to convince my father. It has to be. You and Lyris risked your lives for my kingdom and have been met with nothing but suspicion. You counted on my mother to be your advocate, to convince my father of the Coven's threat. Now she's gone. I'm no substitute, but... I'll speak for you. My father hasn't heard a word I've said since I was old enough to talk. But with mother gone, someone has to make him see reason. You know, she tried to teach me, but I never listened. I guess maybe I'm more like my father than I care to admit. That makes it even more imperative that he heeds your warning and takes action. All of the holds are in danger. Hoffingar, Hjalmarch, Karthald. My father needs to do something before another storm strikes. Meet me at the Blue Palace, all right? I... I just need a moment to think about how to approach this. Consider the words to use. My courtly manners are a bit rusty, and I've never been much for diplomacy and fancy speeches. Shore's bones, I could use a drink. I'm not sure of anything. If I don't do this, though, I'll never forgive myself if something terrible befalls the kingdom. Right. Easy as honey-baked pie. It's not like you came here at the behest of his most hated rival or anything. Look, I'll do my best to get him to listen. You have my word on that. It feels like I've been shattered into a thousand pieces and swept under a rug. But I don't have time to mourn right now, not with the kingdom in danger. Now, let's go talk to my father before I change my mind. Wish me luck, Mog. You would have me spread my forces across the realm to search for nightmares you dredged up from a bottle? It's not! Or should I say, the whispers of eastern vipers tickling your ears? But mother! Enough! Then next you come before me to vomit up your counsel. 
Make sure it doesn't stink of treason. the man. He wouldn't let me get a word in edgewise. Mother always knew how to talk to him. Me, not so much. Mother had a way with father, but she could be just as stubborn. If she wanted something done and he wouldn't oblige, she'd do it herself. Time to take her lessons to heart, I guess. If my father won't take a stand, then I suppose it's up to me. Our kingdom consists of three holds. Hafingar, Hjalmarch, and Karthold. I need to warn them. The Jarls might listen, even if my father won't. I'm the daughter of the High King, after all. Time to start acting like one. Will you come with me? We should visit Jarl Redharn of Hjalmarch first. If we can convince him of the threat, at least his hold can take steps to protect itself. We'll find him in his hall in Morthal. I'll leave word for Lyris with Mog so she'll know where to find us. Honestly, I don't know. But Jarl Redharn tempers his warrior nature with a kind that's not often seen in people of his stature. Besides, he's always had a soft spot for me ever since his daughter and I played together at moots and other gatherings. I remember a time when we were all happy together. Him and mother and I. Seems like a long time ago. At some point he became more and more involved with the trappings of power. He was more interested in being the High King than my father. I tried, but interaction with my father made it difficult. She wanted us to be a family. But the High King wanted a queen and a princess. Eventually, he stopped ordering me to attend royal functions. It was my one victory in our relationship. Assassins tried to kill the High King. They murdered Queen Gerhild. Her poor king must be devastated. The princess, too. What a sad day.
Wolves of ice and bone attacked Rune, my lady, and he saw ghosts. Ghosts? Nonsense. Get him to the inn and I'll do what I can. He's Come on. Crazier than a cat on Lucky Mog passed along your message. I would have hated to miss all this mud. Why does the Princess of Solitude grace my humble hall with her royal presence? Are you here on behalf of the High King? I've come to warn you, Jarl Redhorn. Warn me? I already received orders from your father. What more is there to say? Orders? Uh, right. But you need to prepare the hall's defenses. And what must we defend ourselves against this time? More urns and fetishes? Please, Jarl Redhorn, let my friend explain. The threat to our holds is worse than you can imagine. Hmm. You're not a subject of this realm, and that woman with you. She's the giantess of the East. The High King warned us to beware of packed spies. If Princess Svana trusts you, however, you have my ear. Tell me about this threat. We're not Daedra worshippers. Our blood's hot enough to boil a blizzard. We've got more pressing concerns than some northern squall. We received Svargrim's orders, promptly ignored them, and immediately ran afoul of a gaggle of Reachmen. The High King sent a royal decree, said to leave any strange objects or fetishes we spotted around the hold alone. They were dangerous, he said. Just so happens we found a few. I had my soldiers destroy them. That's when we encountered the Reachmen. The barbarians reacted poorly when we destroyed the strange witch sticks. We beat them back and chased them into the nearby barrow. But that was the last I heard of from my soldiers. Since you dealt with this before, would you investigate the barrow? If I were a few years younger and had more soldiers to spare, I'd march east to the Morthal barrow and deal with the sorceress nonsense myself. But I'm not, I don't, and I have other responsibilities. Take this key. It will get you into the barrel. They were tall, ugly things, covered in strange runes, fetishes, and a poultice that smelled like rotting fungus. They had been set up around the town. My soldiers assumed they'd find one at the barrel, but instead they sent word of the Reachman. Really? Last I heard, the princess was more interested in... No, I won't indulge in idle gossip. Svana carries herself well. Not with the grace of her mother, but she has the swagger of a warrior. I wish I could say the same about my daughter. Had. She was taken from us five years ago. If I had pushed her harder, she might have had the strength to survive. Daughters are a father's greatest weakness. Enough troubles of the past. We have the present to concern ourselves with. That mound? That's the barrel. The entrance will be down below. Keep back! The barrel is unsafe. Jarl Redharn sent us. You, what sir! The barrel is off limits. We are here to make sure nothing gets in or out, and will do so by any means necessary. I did not want to spare the soldiers I had left to send a message. We destroyed a number of strange sticks set up on the outskirts of town. Then we reached the barrel. We spotted a few Reach Barbarians. I sent word and we charged after them. A storm appeared in the barrel, if you could believe such a thing. It was foul magic, almost certainly. 
Soldiers began changing around me, dying or falling into a stupor. Some turned into monsters, and then the Draugr clawed out of their graves. We never made it that far inside, and when the storm hit, it was all I could do to get out and seal the door behind us. If the Jarl sent you, and you're intent on entering the barrel, I won't stop you. But if you emerge as a monster... bodies. They're the Jarl's soldiers.
meager harvest. This grey reliquary must be moved to more fruitful fields. Protect the witch pike. Do not let them destroy it. Done. Let's tell the Yarl what happened here. I never have to enter another barrow, it will be too soon. Thane's boots. <laughs> ha! This old friend of yours sounds... Ah, your companions return. Well, friend of Svana, are you as good as your word? Tell me what you discover at the mortal barrow. A harrow storm. Like the thing the princess was telling me about? The thing that destroyed Kilkreath? Gods! A pox on the reach and its barbarian horde! What else? What about the Reachman in the barrel? Disappointing, but not unexpected. Reach witches are a tricky lot. Still, you have my thanks. In the meantime, Yalmar shall prepare for war. We may not have a defense against the Harrow Storms, but we can be ready to attack once we have a target. And Lyris's help, we've gained the trust of Jarl Redhorn. My father respects the Jarl. That will go a long way in convincing the High King to take the Coven's threat seriously. Now we need to do the same thing at Carthold. Jarl Ulfwen rules the Hold, which was established to provide a defensible border against the Reach. If any of the Western Holds can deal with this threat, it's Carthold. But first, I have one more thing to discuss with Jarl Redhorn. Jarl Redhorn, prepare your forces as you say, but we need you in solitude. Solitude? I have troubles here in your march. Why should I leave when my hold needs me? High King Svargrim won't listen to us, but he might listen to you. Get up, Princess. If you think it will help, I'll talk to your father. Lyris, please escort the Jarl to solitude. Of course. What about you? We need to warn Jarl Ulfwen, so we're going to Carthage. 